Manchester United versus Spurs, and Spurs have got a couple of new signings. Dragushin and nice. Timo <laughs> Werner, ready for a baptism of fire at Old Trafford, or is it? Because are Man United actually any good? Will, answer that question for me. No, they're awful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think as soon as you start to think that they're good, I think that result over Christmas against Aston Villa and the comeback and the fight and the spirit, and you're like, here we go. And then it, yeah, it just goes completely the other way. So I think Tottenham, I mean, even looking at the transfer windows, just... I know we've got the Ineos stuff to come from Manchester United, but Big Ange has just bought this philosophy. And even with the signings, it's so easy to get those done now because it's like, you know, I'm a football manager player. We, you know what you want, you get those done early. And it, it's easy <laughs> business done and they've strengthened the squad for what Big Ange wants. So Manchester United, yeah, I, I think the best thing they could do this January, and I know we're talking about the game as well, but is just not do anything and just wait till the summer and, and just, you know, work on what they've got, work on what they want to keep and not spend any silly money, which like, they have done for, what, six, seven years now. Let's talk about those two players that have come in for Spurs. Uh, maybe start with Tregosheen from mm. Genoa, who was at Juventus, was allowed to go, had, had a couple of loan moves. Uh, I know you love your Serie A. Talk to us about him. Very good defender. Um, the fact Bayern, Bayern have been watching him for a while, actually. Um, but like the profile that I've compared him to is like Van Dijk profile wise not quality wise but in possession very calm extremely dominant in the air nowhere near as quick as Van Dijk when you play in a high line that is the one thing you got to think about but then you think about Christian Romero he's not exactly rapid you only need four or five yards of pace which he's got um, so I think it's, it's a perfect profile to, to bring in for Tottenham and they were desperate for centre-backs Is there a, a big question mark in the sense that Genoa don't play that same way. You know, mm. I, I'll be honest, I haven't seen a huge amount of him, but the, all the clips that I've seen, all his defending is in his own box, mm. sort of last ditch stuff. Very unlike how exposed he will be at times as a centre back for Tottenham. Is that something to be worried about, or do you see the outline of him and go, no, we can put him a bit higher at the pitch and he'll be fine? I think athletically he'll be fine. Yeah. That's, that's the key thing, because it's similar with Van der Ven. Wolfsburg don't play Spurs as yeah. Spurs' is fashion. Spurs' style of football and he's adapted quite well the only thing is for this particular game the reason United were brilliant against was against Villa was because they're playing against a high line so in a lot of ways like this really suits United and there's potentially a new centre back in alongside Van der Ven who's just come back from a hammy injury so you kind of go in a weird way you know in this weird weird Premier League season we've had United might be going hey, it's a perfect game bring in right. whoever you want yeah uh, that's fascinating we'll get let's get into that a little bit later when we do the preview itself when it comes to Timo Werner who had li been linked with a few teams, been linked with uh, Aston Villa briefly. He was linked with Man United a little bit. Um, and actually, when it comes to that style of play, you could imagine him being in that Man United side and, you know, there's a lot of perfect. space there. He's actually perfect he for that. He would be perfect for that, right? But he's not. He's going to be playing for Spurs in this one. Um, how do you feel about Timo Werner stepping in to this Spurs side? Do you think it's a, a good move? He has become, I saw a lot of people saying this sort of phrase of a banter player. There's this sort of trial by social media for a lot of players these days. And he was certainly one of those. Can Ange turn him round? One thing I love, Jim, and that's a banter player. Uh, I'm going to get behind the, the sort of comeback angle of Timo Werner. It's weird, isn't it? Because like you said, the profile for Timo Werner and Manchester United is perfect. But I think that's why Manchester United find themselves in so much trouble. Because obviously they hark so much on about the past and all the trophies and everything that's won. And that's right to do, celebrate that fact. But like that's not the here and now. They're in a stage where they need to get probably dra Dragushin. Yes, get him. One now. Um, <laughs> that sort of type of player where it's a bit lower down and the fans will be like, this isn't a top tier name like a Varane, but they can build and, and grow with that. Uh, perfect for Spurs. Um, I think it, he'll be great. Uh, even the finances involved, if it's not that good, it doesn't really matter. And they can, it's, not a, it's optional to buy, isn't it? So mm. great all round. And I think just the, just the man that they, they need. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he scores on the weekend. That's the thing for me with Timo Werner. That this, this is a good signing because it's not a signing. This is, a, this is a guy you've got for six games, really. Like, there's a, there's a, it, it, you think there's a full stop of going, Timo Werner's gone to Spurs. That's not, there's a comma there that actually should be, Timo's gone to Spurs for now. Like, he, mm. he is not, there's no way he signs for Spurs long term. Why? Why? No why? Why? why not? Because, because he's not good enough, <laughs> simply. We're right. on the redemption arc here. No, I hear that. <laughs> but in terms of where they want to go long term, mm. what I like about him as... He, he has energy. And I think for players that Tottenham and Ange wants to bring in, it is about energy. And I get that short term. But in terms of going and beating team after team after team, 
and again, I think he's a sort of that sacrifice, sacrificial centre forward that could stretch the play a little bit at times and, and occupy defenders and then create space for others. But he will never be that finisher that people want to be, want him to be. And therefore, you want to be able to get out of these problems. That we, sometimes you buy a player and you go, how do we get rid of this guy? Mm. You can get rid of this guy really, really easily. And if he does well in these six games and it, it's all great fun, he scores some goals, like, wonderful. But he's never going to, you know, you're not going to take Sun out of the team. If he's happy to be a backup player, then fine. But again, I, I don't really feel like he's the guy you want to rely on full time. And I think it's a really simple one where he will be here. I don't think we've got that many transfers to talk about right now. And so, oh, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, that, let's put that together. Let's talk about it. Hmm. Fine with that. He will not be someone that we're talking about come August. He will not be a Tottenham player. No way. The you know, thing is, I'm on the redemption arc as well. <laughs> um, well I get it. And I, 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 he seems like a nice bloke. But I just, I just don't... The I thing think this is great business because it's not real business. But it's if, a, if he plays 10 games, scores four and gets an assist for 15 million because that's the option to buy as a backup striker to Richarlison, Kulisevsky, Bernie, um, Sonny can play all of those positions. Where are you going to get a 15 million pound player that is willing to do that? It doesn't happen anymore. So I tell you the interesting one as well, if Spurs do get sort of top four and they get Champions League football next season, then it becomes a bit more of an interesting yeah. one there of like, he's got that experience in the Champions League, but then almost, I, I don't know, Timo, there's a shocking fact for you, but <laughs> I hope it's not the case of one of those like, occasions that you see so often where you'd have a really good six month loan period, get the contract in, uh, a bit like Aubameyang at Arsenal, and then it's like, well, I've got my money, now I'm mm. going to Yeah, I just, for me, I... I get it. He, he scored goals at Leipzig the first time round. I just don't see him being a Premier League title winner or, or in a squad that does that. But are Spurs going to win a Premier League title? But that's where they're trying to get to. So you have to fake it till you make it, I think, when it comes mm. to Spurs. That's what they're trying to become. So I don't think Timo Werner is that. I get that it's cheap. And if it is that cheap, then OK, fine. But I think they, regardless of how well he does, they will go, thank you. But goodbye. This calls for a James Allcott video on his channel, Timo Werner. <laughs> dot dot dot. That's what I say. That's it. We'll, we'll do it when, he, when, he, when we wave him off goodbye. And I, I just yeah, I just don't see it. I think it's he'll do at best okay. There's no way he kills it. There's just no way. Uh, well, Keep it up. Yeah, and I'll be <laughs> honest. I'm not. I mean, you what six point five on fantasy football? There's no way I'm debating that fact either. So okay. I'm going early. Timo's in my team. <laughs> uh, should Man United have uh, got him? I think so. They're lacking they goals the striker, desperately. They? they desperately need someone to play through the middle. Uh, there's certain games will really suit. They want to play. The problem is for United, they want to play attractive football. For them, transitional football is not attractive football. But their two best players are Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford, you would say, who suit playing transitional football. Yeah. So they've got to decide which side of the bed they want to sleep on. Mm. And if they want to sleep on the transitional side, then Timo Werner's a guy. <laughs> also, if Sounds really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing Manchester United love in January is a banter player on loan. So you thought that would have been In perfect. particular, a striker. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Right. So Over I'm surprised the they missed the opportunity missed to do that. You're right. Um, to the game itself. The counter-attacking style of, transitional style of Man United, this will suit them. Um, and obviously at Old Trafford as well. How do you see the game panning out? I'm, I'm going to go for a Spurs win. I think that they've sort of got, got it going recently. They've got their injuries coming back as well. Smart signings, which, you know, hope hopefully they will pay off. And I think it'll be a 2-1 win for Spurs. OK. I'm going to go with 2-2. Uh, I don't see either team completely dominating. I think it's going to be a helter-skelter type of game. OK. I think I think the home advantage will help a little bit when it comes to Man United, but they still have not got themselves sorted out at all. Is it Timo Werner winner after oh, everything I've said? Amen. Yeah, <laughs> for the redemption arc, Spurs <laughs> to win. I'm going to go two-one. Timo Werner with the winner. 